the last part of uh, vector analysis deals with the two important theorems that are frequently used in field theory. One is Gauss divisions theorem and the other is Stokes theorem. Gauss divisions theorem and Stokes theorem are purely mathematical theorems and Gauss divisions theorem is not same as Gauss law. Keep that in mind. So this is a purely mathematical theorem which gives you the relationship between the surface integral and volume integral. So Gauss Davison's theorem states that the volume integral that is a triple integral the volume integral of the divergence of the vector field A bar that is del dot A T V is equal to the surface integral of the vector field A bar surface integral of A dot T S equal to surface integral of vector field A bar and this surface and volume they are related to each other. So this is a closed surface which is which will enclose the volume V. It's like a ball. The outer surface is a closed surface that is going to enclose a certain amount of volume inside it. Okay, so that's a kind of surface and volume we are considering. So here the surface that is considered is a closed surface. So the volume integral of the divergence of the vector field A bar is equal to the, sur the surface integral of the vector field A bar taken over any closed surface S enclosing the volume V. Okay. So if you have, uh, if you know the surface integral of a, a vector field, then you could easily get the volume integral by using the cost divergence theorem. Okay. Or sometimes it is referred to as just a divergence theorem. Gauss used this theorem to come up with a very significant law called Gauss law with that we would anyway study in electrostatics chapter. Okay. Similar to this theorem there is one more which is called Stokes theorem. Stokes theorem. Stokes theorem relates line integral to surface integral and vice versa. Stokes theorem states that the surface integral of the curl of the vector field A bar. What is curl of the vector field? Del cross A. Surface integral of the curl of the vector field A bar is equal to the line integral of the vector field A bar taken along the closed periphery or contour of the surface. So in Stokes theorem, the surface S that is considered need not be a closed surface. So it will be an open surface. So if you take the surface integral over this open surface, surface integral of the curl of the vector field along this particular surface, this would be equal to the line integral of the vector field taken along the closed periphery or contour, contour of the surface. So given line integral, you can convert it to surface integral using the Stokes theorem. Of course, there, there are some other theorems like Green's theorem, etc., that we would not use in field theory, but you would study this as a part of in your mathematics course. You would also study this Gauss Jevons theorem and Stokes theorem uh, in detail. I mean, you will, you will solve many problems in, in your mathematics course, but in field theory, uh, I will not make you solve problems where you know you convert surface integral to volume integral, and vice versa. That's not important uh, here. But what is important is the application of these theorems. I mean, you should know where to apply uh, uh, these theorems and then uh, understand the results that are obtained after you apply both these theorems, Gauss-Jevons theorem and Stokes theorems. In addition to these two theorems, I would also like to emphasize three important identities that you are expected to know uh, in, in vector analysis. So the first identity is div curl A is equal to dash. What is divergence of the curl of the vector field A bar? Very important. 
so write down mathematically what does it mean div curl a it is divergence of del dot del cross a is the question important one mark question what is del dot del cross a del cross a you know it's cross product of two vectors del cross a is a vector which is perpendicular to both del bar and a bar so del cross a would be a vector which is perpendicular to del and you are taking the dot product with the same del right so del cross a is perpendicular to del and in dot product you know when the, if the angle between the two vectors is 90 then cos 90 the dot product will be equal to 0 okay, remember that this is not a vector 0 this is a scalar 0 because it is the dot product of two vectors also you, you you get it as zero if you use the scalar triple product concept where it is determinant of wx w z again wx w z ax a y z in the determinant if two rows are same or if one row is scalar multiple of the other we know that the value of the determinant will be equal to zero second identity curl grad f is equal to dash what is the curl of the gradient of a scalar function? Write down mathematically what does it mean? Del cross del f is equal to dash. What is del cross del f? Can I write del cross del f as del cross del multiplied by f? And what is del cross del? What is the cross product of a vector with itself? We know a vector is parallel to itself, itself right? So del cross del will be equal to null vector, zero cap or zero bar. It is not a scalar, it is a vector quantity. So curl grad f is a null vector. So we have to be careful. Important one more question. Curl grad f, option A would be zero and option D would be null vector. So you should not jump and select zero thinking that it that you get it as zero you don't get a zero it is not a scalar zero it's a vector zero which means it is a null vector or a zero vector the third identity is div grad f what is div grad f means we are asking you to find out del dot del f and how will you find out del dot del f del dot del f is nothing but del dot del into f this we denote it as del square del square f and what is del square del square is nothing but dou square by dou x square in cartesian coordinate system plus dou square by dou y square plus dou square by 2z square that is del square right so div grad f is not equal to 0 div grad f is equal to del square f. so these are three important identities that will be used in field theory. This div curl a equal to zero would be used in magnetostatics, curl grad f would be used in electrostatics, and div grad f would be used in wave equations. Of course, from electromagnetic wave chapter, we will be using these three equations many times. So they would be used in electromagnetic wave chapter, they would be used in transmission lines, also in uh, in understanding the wave propagation uh, in wave gates and and optical fibers okay in addition to it I would also like to mention the distributive property you can take a note a bar dot b bar plus c bar is equal to a dot b plus a dot c a, a bar cross b bar plus c bar is equal to a bar cross b bar plus a bar cross c bar this is actually the distributive property distributive property of vector addition distributive property of vector addition and this del bar can be sorry a bar can be del bar could be like del bar dot b bar plus c bar or del bar cross b bar plus c bar so don't think del bar is, some, uh, is something different or uh, something something very uh, 
very confusing one. It's, it, it's, it's not different from any other vector. It's only a representation of of a quantity that is a that is w x x cap plus w y cap plus w z cap. It is just a vector, and so treat it as a normal vector. That was good. So we completed our, our first topic, the vector analysis, and I suggest all of you to to become thorough with whatever we have done in vector analysis. And if you feel that you are comfortable with with this topic, then log on to www.tenpointer.com i hope you have registered to tenpointer.com by this time otherwise register at tenpointer.com and then take few practice tests on vector analysis before we before you attend uh, the next lecture that is electrostatics thank you